We are what we eat, but are we what we play? Are we the masters of our video game avatars? Or are we following a set path set by the designers? I've been exploring the question of identity through the action RPG role-playing game Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim. Skyrim is a computer game that takes place in the fictional province of Skyrim. You play as the Dragonborn. And you can interact with the game world in as much the same way as in the real world. You can cook food, get married, chop wood for firewood, and fight monsters. But Dragonborn, or Doverkeen, is just a title. The character's name is up to you. Everything is up to you. In fact, right down to the clothes you can wear, and believe me, there are many combinations. You can even choose what race to play as, whether it be a human, an elf, a dark elf, a cat person, or even a member of a lizard human-like species. The player's identity has not been established for you, as in games such as Tomb Raider or Assassin's Creed. You are a blank canvas. The only backstory you are given is that you are a prisoner, and neither your crime or your innocence is confirmed. This functions similar to a tabletop RPG, where computer RPGs trace their lineage. A player creates their character in the confines of the setting and role plays the character, that is to act out whatever the character would do and the decisions she makes to complete objectives set out by the game master. So are RPG players playing as themselves? or as the character. There is some overlap. Players tend to make decisions as the character according to their own morals. But, players can also make decisions that are very unlike their very own morals that they abide to. It is, after all, a game, and the point is to have fun. Players can toy with ethical decisions to difficult problems inside a video game that would never come out in real life. Morality in Skyrim is not black and white, more like black and grey. You can receive quests by some very shady characters working for some shady organisations. You can fight in its civil war, as either as a soldier for a disinterested and aggressive empire, or for a bunch of bloodthirsty and racist freedom fighters. Neither organisation can be considered the right side, and both factions have committed atrocities. In Skyrim, there is a potential for both great good and great evil. You can help out a stranger, or break into people's homes and pickpocket them. The Dark Brotherhood storyline is the most confronting morally. The Dark Brotherhood are assassins for hire, and most of them are disturbed psychopaths, but they still retain a sense of loyalty to each other and tradition. You do have an option to help them, or to kill them all. In my research, I found many players making that decision according to their own morals, regardless of what their creative character would actually do. In a sense, they stopped role-playing, and it inserted themselves into the narrative. Another facet of identity in computer games is gender. In Skyrim, you have the binary option as playing as either a male or a female. And you can actually get married in the game, to either sex. But what if a player plays as a character opposite of their gender? My research suggests that this is nothing new, or exclusive to Skyrim. Males can play as females, and vice versa, for many different reasons. 
In fact, historically speaking, female gamers had to put up with this a lot longer than male players. As there were no games with suitable female characters that they could play as. There are other reasons as well, such as the quality of voice acting and storylines, and some frankly sexist reasons as why some people, some players like to play as opposite of their gender. But I think the most important and the most fascinating aspect is that it offers freedom, not offered by real life. The shackles to conform to society's view of masculinity or femininity can be broken and Skyrim allows this. I started this story investigating the idea of identity and roleplay in video games through Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. Are we the Dragonborn or is the Dragonborn us? I believe that there is a mix. We perform the Dragonborn's heroic deeds but how this myth mythical figure does this is up to us. In one playthrough, we can make the moral decisions of our avatar with our own moral. And in a second playthrough, we can try to make the decisions in character. It is the freedom to create characters of almost an infinite variation that gives computer RPGs like Skyrim a sense of escapism like no other artistic medium. You create the backstory, you develop the identity, and you play as whatever you like to be.